it's Lou Collins and today I want to talk you through stamping on fabric. Now I'm going to be doing this with the new textures stitch in time embroidery flowers stamps. So the idea is that by some simple stamping you can create some uh, faux embroidery so it looks like hand stitching you can do this on paper of course to get the effects on your cards and your scrapbook pages but stamping on fabric is super easy as well so I'm going to show you how I whipped up both of these embroidery hoops really in less than a morning it was actually only about 30 minutes for each one so I'm actually going to take one of these out of the hoop so we can use the hoop because I only have the two so I'm just going to take this one and just loosen it. So these are real embroidery hoops, which I love to use because at least that way, um, you know, you're getting that authentic look and they're larger than my embroidery hoop dies. So just removing that fabric, I'll pop that to the side. Um, what you want to do is you want to take the outer or the sorry the inner hoop but the outer side of it and I've got here a piece of cotton now this has been pressed a little bit it will stretch as well but I've pressed this so that the, there aren't too many creases in it um, and it's a very thin it's a, a cotton with a very very thin weave there's no uh, large gaps or anything in it there's not much texture to it at all it's the smoothest thinnest cotton I could get with the least the smallest weave in it possible so now just taking a pencil on this I'm just going to draw lightly around the outside of this hoop here just to give me a rough guide now this is for the most part going to be covered up once we stretch our fabric because at the moment it's loose um, but at least if you do it with a pencil you can then erase those lines later on so the inks that I'm going to be using here are uh, mostly Versa Magic chalk inks so they come like this in the little cat's eyes um, I really like these I think they're lovely bold colors and as well as an extra bonus for you I'm just bringing in lots of the colors that I've got but as a bonus for you we've got um, I've tried this out I've stamped onto uh, a piece of the same fabric I have heat set it with an iron I always heat set any ink or paint on fabric with an iron it's just become habit now um, really to make sure it stains and then I've given this a cold hand wash I haven't used hot water and I haven't used detergent but if you're going to do this on something more like, uh, I don't know, an apron or a canvas, a tote bag that's got a nice uh, smooth fabric on, you can do this as well. Um, but like I say, you'd probably be best off keeping to the cold hand wash because as you can see, I just stamped my, um, my ink pads there. Um, these were already a distressed look. They didn't stamp fully and they're absolutely fine. The color hasn't run at all, okay? Maybe a, a slight bit of fading in how vivid the colors are, but very, very little, hardly enough to tell. So now what I'm going to do first of all is I'm actually going to choose my colors. I think for this one, I'm actually going to go with a bit of a rainbow theme. I'm going to bring in um, some colors that go with the rainbow to start with. I've got some other ink pads here as well that aren't the chalk inks but will work in a very similar way as well and these are like mementos here for example and I've got some uh, inexpensive almost sort of copy versions of the ink pads so I'm just using all of these working my way through so green blue and then to the purples which I've got lots of purple I've got eggplant there um, and then I've got purple hydrangea and I've got perfect plum uh, and then I think I think that I think that's it I think that's enough there um, for these what I like to do very often with these stamps 
is use pairs of colour. So it will be um, a paler colour for the solid, more solid stamp and then a darker colour for the stitching effect over the top. But for this, I'm actually not going to do the layering. So it's going to be much, much quicker and we're just going to get the look of open thread embroidery, not so much of the built up solid threads in here. It's a lot quicker to stamp as well. And we haven't got to worry about pairing up uh, so for example our lighter and our darker shade so if I was doing this I'd make sure that each of the darker shades had a lighter shade to go underneath if I was going to do the pairing now popping these just up to the top here so we've got them all these are how my flowers are going to be and I think I'm going to do a a bit of a wreath and I'm going to start from this side round to the top so it'll be reds down the bottom purples at the top so I'm going to start with those two and the middle to gauge my spacing around this circle here. I'm going to do all of this with a small acrylic block. I'm not going to be bringing in any large blocks at the moment. Um, and one thing I have got to hand, which is very important, is a wet wipe or a stamp cleaning tool of some sort because we're going to keep flipping the colours around. So I do need that. So just taking my stamp set this is an A5 stamp set and it is po photo polymer that means it's a really good quality clear stamp set I'm on um, a smooth surface I've got a bit of a crease in the, um, the the wood grain effect that I've got underneath here so I'm going to make sure when I'm stamping I don't go on to that crease anywhere so let's just bring some things over here to fill that space just to make sure that I stay away from that um, otherwise everything's nice and smooth underneath and like I say my fabric has been pressed a little while ago so let's get started with some of the larger flowers first of all uh, I'm going to start with a red nice and bright look how juicy these inks are they are beautiful so let's just I'm going to pull with my hands I'm actually going to pull my fabric a little bit taut not too much just a touch there and stamp and as you can see we've already got our first embroidered flower I mean how quick and easy is that the fabric isn't the sort of thing that you can be putting inside of a stamping block so um, this is definitely one to do by hand using your acrylic blocks so make sure you give a nice lots of pressure on there and you can use any color you like really of the fabric I usually go for natural colors or a white um, but you can absolutely be going for a darker colors if you've got them just make sure it is a smooth fabric now coming up to the top as well I think I'm going to stick with the same stamp a few ways round. I'm coming to the top and I'm going to also stamp this beautiful purple so this is almost coming back round to the red shades here that's the idea of this one so stamp that one and I will do that again once more as well because I'll need a few flowers in each of the colors scattered around I'm going to make sure the flowers blend from one into the other so it, it isn't a solid there's the reds there's the oranges there's the yellows I'm going to make sure that we've got a nice variation so keeping that stamp there I'm going to keep these in order the whole time I'm going to come round to the blues and add these in and this is just at the moment a little bit of a guide for me just so that I know whereabouts each colour is progressing to so this is going to be around about here just this side of the halfway mark and then I think I'm going to do the same but with the pale blue and this is the largest of all the flowers in the stamp set so we have got some smaller flowers that we can pop in around it afterwards which is why this one's great for laying down your boundaries first um, we want to make sure as well we're not just staying on an even line we want to come in and out of this this wreath a little bit so a pale blue there I just love this stamp all of these were hand drawn by myself um, so you won't find anything like this around anywhere else um, moving to the next largest one it's a different shape this one I'm going to start filling in 
the uh, other colors now look at this orange isn't that just beautiful so let's pop that next to the red there look, just one impression and already it looks as if that has been embroidered on now let's move to the oh do i want to do the yellow yeah let's do a yellow again a lovely deep bright color these versa magic ink pads are so vivid they really are gorgeous let's put a yellow here and we'll keep coming back we'll keep coming back to the different shades in fact once i've got the baseline down i'll probably speed this up for everybody so you don't have to sit through all of these a green i'm going to add in in another flower shape i've got that blue let's add a nice dark really dark blue like almost like a navy blue there this one is a memento ink so it's a little bit different they're gorgeous they just work so well don't they they just look perfect um, and then let's add in a purple in this shade here just between the two of the sort of plum colors that we've got there and what did I miss out here I actually missed this eggplant color so we'll pop that there just so I know to do that so you can start to see our rainbow coming now I'm going to move that down to the next largest flower and we're getting a bit smaller now and we'll do definitely start with these two here I don't know if you can hear that we've got lorries outside unloading things it's a lovely bright green i won't use too much of the green though because i don't want that to look too much like foliage um, and then i'm going to come back with this purple here we've got a lot of purples going on a, a lot of those so i think what i might do is come back in with another nice light blue just to sort of creep into the purples a little more there with this same one um, let's just pop that there there we go taking no time at all to start building this up once we start adding smaller flowers and foliage honestly they'll come together so quickly let's do a very quick uh, just reset of the colors just so that oh of course I've got teal I nearly missed the teal there um, I think that's all of them. I don't have a bright pink in there, but never mind. Um, I might actually bring this one down. Let's just have a look at my other flowers. So I'd like to bring an orange in here just to break up this, um, this red here where I've got two reds together. So let's bring an orange in there. Do I want to use this one anywhere else? I think... I think I might like to, I love teal. Teal's one of my favorite colors. So I might like to just bring in a bit more of this teal elsewhere. So just up here, perhaps still keeping all the blues together there. Can you see one impression and I'm getting a perfect stamp, a perfect result every time, even on fabric. Now moving down, this is the smallest flower. This is where we're really going to be adding in lots of details so lovely lovely juicy yellow there i'm going to start working around thinking right where do i need my additional colors slot in where have i got gaps because i have a few of those and i can put this smaller flower in there there we go i might then bring i might just bring one red in these back in order so I don't lose myself just one small red in here and you can over stamp these inks as well I love that you can um, you can stamp one color over the top of the other and it's nice and vivid and it holds its color so it's not opaque uh, sorry it's not transparent at all it's very opaque so that's a lovely effect if you want to be over stamping um, next I need to bring in some more blue so we've got the green there but like I said I don't want to do too much of the green I can do a little bit in a moment there's another blue there let's do a little bit of green up here 
it's usually a good idea if you are using green in your flowers to make sure that you use a different green for your leaves which is what I will do um, I think I'm going to need a nice teal or turquoise colour so this is like a, a knotted rose I don't know the exact name for it because I don't do embroidery because I don't have the patience for it I love the look of it I adore the look of embroidery I adore the look of faux stamping as well on my cards and um, my other projects but sorry faux stitching not stamping but I just don't have the patience for it and this is why I developed this collection because I wanted to get that look without any of the hassle or the time um, but of course if you, if you love if you do love embroidery then uh, by all means I, I am in awe of you I really am so just stamping these going to my teals and start bringing my purples down a little bit so I've got the eggplant color here bring one of these in up here so this is like my filler flower really this is just filling in all the gaps for me um, let's come in with pop these back I think we need to come in with the darker blue again once more just there there we go and then lastly let's just see with these colors so we've got the purple let's bring the hydrangea color purple hydrangea in here making sure I'm not catching the edge there with anything and I wonder if I've got a pink a nice I've got a very bright pink here that I can just use on the end just between these two just there perfect okay I think that is all of the flower heads done I think I don't need to do any more for that so I'm now going to come to my favorite green ink pad to use and that's Spanish olive now when I'm doing my leaves again I'm just going to be concentrating on the finer stitched stamp so if we take a look at the stamp set again as you can see each pair has a solid design and then the stitching to go over the top we've got the leaves as well and the flowers so I've only used the ones that are the more open stitching I've not used those solid colors over the top and I'm going to stick the same with the leaves as well um, it's a good idea as well if you can to just place your stamp down before you put any ink on it so you can start to gauge whether or not you've um, you've got enough room to put the stamp where you're going whether you can stamp the entire image or if you just want to ink up a little bit of it so for this one I'm happy here to do the entire image all the way down because it's at the very end of the wreath so that's going to finish that off and I'm going to bring down the same as well this end and then I'll have a few of these scattered throughout the wreath too so bringing that one down I think down here there we go I'm just going to clean this up I don't like too much excess ink on them I like to keep them reasonably clean and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink this but just down to five of the leaves there so I'm not inking all of it and I'm going to start putting these in gaps poking out because this is the largest leaf set so it's actually not it's the longest we've got a larger slightly wider leaf in here as well like so um, I need a few on the outer edge of this reef too so I'm going to again clean my stamp up and I'm just going to apply some ink to the top three leaves this time I've just gone a little bit over there so I always always keep an, a wet wipe handy so we're just making the most of this this stamp here let's pull that taut again there we go the top three and coming to the outside here I'm quite random with this very random and really very quick as well I'm just coming we've got lots of greens around there because of course we've got our green flowers 
but that rainbow color is really starting to show through isn't it there we go okay I'm happy with that one for now so I'm now going to skip to my last finishing stamp and that is the smallest of the leaves and that's this one so the least detail and everything okay and this one is just going to fill in all those other gaps it's quite a small leaf so I'm just going to go in I can go to the base as well of these larger ones if I want to and really just evenly work my way around the entire wreath adding these in you can come in a little bit further into the design come as close to the pencil line as you wish um, let's see I can fit another one there and really make this look nice and full lots and lots of leaves and foliage and flowers in there now I'm using the same green it's my Spanish olive I love this green it's my favorite to use for this technique um, with these stamps and I tend to use it if I'm going to use it at all I'll use it underneath tea leaves from Versa Magic there as well it makes a really nice leaf color when the two are layered up so just coming round I've just got a couple more to do I've got one here and then another one or maybe even two at the side here that sits perfectly there I think I just missed that so just go back over there we go lovely I'm more than happy with that and how that's come together so I'm just going to carefully move away all of my ink pads now all the lids are on those I'm going to put my stamps away as well and then I'm going to bring in one last little finishing touch that will make this look really super realistic as embroidery now you can use real buttons or you can use uh, faux ones so it may be that you've got a button die or something at home we've got a button die a couple of button dies in with the sewing tools in the textures collection from the stitch in time range um, but these are real wooden buttons not too dissimilar from the color of the base there so they're not going to detract from the color so just pop them to the side because what I want to do is I want to pop this back into the embroidery hoop before I add those on because I'll then want the glue to dry so what I'm going to do now is bring under here these dry very quickly by the way I haven't had to give that any time to dry but I'm going to position my hoop back under those pencil lines just where it was earlier hopefully your pencil lines will be just over the edge there so make sure that you can't see too much of that and then keeping an eye on where the top of your hoop is so make sure it's I mean you may want this to be the top here with the opening that would be lovely as well in fact I might I might change my mind and I might do that have it that way and just place the hoop over there now you notice we've still got a little bit of looseness to this so I'm just going to bring it over I'm going to bring each of these corners a little bit tighter for now do ensure your ink is really dry before you do this like I say it shouldn't take long to dry at all but don't turn it over onto a surface until you're sure that is dry pulling this taut and then I'm just going to tighten up the hoop ever so slightly before then pulling that tension again and keep re repeating that until I've got this as tight as possible and I know that that fabric isn't going to go anywhere there we go so now we've got our faux embroidered flowers in that beautiful rainbow sweep going around our frame we just need to trim off this excess fabric there to make that a bit smaller but as I said to you about finishing touch with the buttons what I like to do is take a suitable glue I'm going to use um, Kalau glue because it will stick fabric and chipboard and um, paper of course all sorts and I'm just going to apply a few of the uh, little wooden buttons to just the very centers of the flowers so the tiniest little bit of glue just in the center there obviously if you want to be doing things like maybe washing this as I said in a cool hand wash it's a good idea to then go on and stitch these ones rather than just leaving them 
glued on but you can certainly glue them to start with and then stitch them later and that will give you a good hold keep them in place for you so there's a few buttons I've just added them onto the centers of these bolder flowers because I really like the look of the gaps inside some of these other smaller flowers there so there's our faux embroidery hoop stamping all using the textures stitch in time embroidery floral stamps you can create so many different designs with these but you'll find these they're available at craftstash.co.uk i will post a link in the comments for you if you like this video please do hit the subscribe button because i'll be getting new videos up each week take care everybody bye bye